Today, Martha and I are going to try to install the auto throttle kit, which is supposed to just fit the 2025R. But we're going to try to install it on a 1025R. I've not heard of anyone trying it. Maybe I just haven't researched it enough, but we're going to give it a try today. As you know, I really enjoy the auto throttle on the 2038R that we have, so I'm looking forward to having that feature. Now, if this works, I'll put a link to the auto throttle kit from greenpartstore.com in the description. Of course, you get free shipping when you buy it from there. If it doesn't work, I'll probably still show the video just to show that, well, not everything works that we try. Okay, this kit is purely mechanical, nothing electrical to it, uh, a lot of small parts, only a couple of cables, There's a couple of mounting brackets. This actually looks like a protective bracket maybe that goes on when it's all done. So at some level, it's fairly easy to understand how this kit's going to work. It is mechanical, as we say, so it's going to have to connect the hydrostatic pedals, both front and rear pedal, to the actual mechanical throttle lever. Doesn't sound too difficult, right? I think that's why we have two bike cables. I call them bike cables. They look like brake cables on a bicycle. The only thing complex to me is just this big pile of small parts that we got to put together. So it must not be entirely trivial to put on. We'll see. You really like the camera, don't you? Okay, we're looking at a unique angle here. The front of the tractor is this direction. We're looking upward. This is the back end of the two hydrostatic levers right here. Forward, reversed. First thing we have to do is take out these two bolts. These are the adjustment bolts to uh, keep you from pressing the levers too far. Next, remove these little clips. Okay, the way I found to get this clip out is to insert this bolt backwards. Now, the new kit had a shorter bolt with it, with the same threads, so I'm inserting that shorter bolt in. Okay, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room by holding down the forward pedal temporarily. That gives me a little more space here on the reverse pedal. I use my Nipex pliers to pull down on this side. I use my screwdriver to pry back on that side, and hopefully between those two. That little clip's really got an annoying safety on it right there that's really hard to deal with. Okay, the next step is to assemble the auto throttle cable support bracket. Okay, that sort of makes sense. Either pedal moves the, the auto throttle bracket, which is presumably the middle one, will be pulled up or pushed down, whichever way it is. Install stud A. By rolling my toolbox in here, I rarely have to move. I can kind of stay in this one area and do everything I need. I think this had a collar on it anyway, so I should be able to tighten it tight. They call this the auto throttle cable. I'll insert it right in this little hole. It snaps in there, and then there's this rubber grommet-like protector piece that goes right up on there. Now you wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't already know this, but it is much easier to understand how to put something together from a video than it is a few still pictures and words on a page for instruction. And that's where I've been for the last 20 minutes or so. I've really had trouble understanding how this new bracket is going to fit in. We're going to install it on the tractor now, and I'm going to start by inserting this auto throttle cable right up through um, this little brace back here. Now one thing I didn't say at the beginning was that you have to have the floorboard off. I took that off before I even started this video because, well, I've shown you that before. Uh, there's a, an episode recently where I showed you the differences between the 2018 and 2014 1025R. That shows you how to do it on the 2018 version. I've shown you several times in the past on the 2014 and up to 2017 versions. Check those episodes out. No use repeating that here. But yes, we did take the floorboard off. So I'm going to insert this auto throttle cable up through here. We need to mount this bracket up here into those same holes we just removed the uh, clamps from. And that will serve as the stops for these pedals. Now later in the adjustment part of the process, I've determined that there's not enough room 
in here to install it the normal way, the way the book says to install it. So I've actually used flat washers as a shim in a couple of places and I've actually removed a nut. There's supposed to be a nut held against this bolt right here so that you can adjust that stop. Well, it turns out that even the nut makes the stop stick out a little bit too far. So these flat washers I bought separately. I actually already had them, so you know it's one case that you might make for keeping your own bolts and nuts in your shop. It saves you a trip. I've decided to go with three washers here on the front side of this long bolt. Pull the reverse pedal down is the only way I know to get it through there. And then two washers on the back side and two washers on the stud, which is on this side. That way we've got two on each side behind the bracket. Now we'll hold it snugly here and make sure that it hits there. And it does, because we want that to be a good stop for that pedal. So how many washers do you need on each side? Depends on the thickness of your washers. The washers on the back side of the bracket or between the two brackets are to set the reverse pedal travel distance. The number of washers on the front side of the inside bolt will set the front pedal travel distance. And you really want these pedals to travel as far as they can, but you do want them to stop against the bolts here. When I used the factory kit made for the 2025R, I did not get sufficient travel on this reverse pedal. There's the final washer configuration on the forward side, final configuration on the reverse side. Okay, so next up is these auto throttle linkage cables. Now Martha says that the mechanism here is supposed to be 174 meters center to center from that pin. That Hope Mary, I didn't really ask you. I've been doing really fine. Then all of a sudden they decide they want to be involved again. Now I can't tell you this is real high tech. Martha thinks it's good enough. So we'll see how it goes. But these are how the throttle linkage, auto throttle linkage connectors work. Get out of the way so I can read the next step. Or are you going to read it to me? Okay, there is a bushing. So install that, see that bushing I put on there? Whoops, it just came out in the hole where it needs to be anyway. Okay, we'll do the reverse side now. Okay, so there's a screw or bolt, you might call it, from the inside here. Then there's a bushing to keep it separate, to keep the auto throttle linkage separate from the pedal. And then there's the auto throttle linkage. It wants you to adjust this length until pivot pins rest against cable actuating pivot bracket and linkages align with HST pedal holes. Seems like when I pull this tight, so that pulls this bracket all the way to the forward, you know, it's pretty well aligned. I guess that's, that's good. Now using that same approach, this one does appear to be a little bit long. the bolt from the inside, so I'll separate them if I can. Well, they won't stay separated. Oops, I always drop something. Martha, if you would just retrieve it, that would be fine. Bring it here, Martha. Okay, after much fumbling, I believe 530 seconds is the size of the Allen head on this bolt. Okay, so we're finished, I think, for now on the underside of the tractor, so I'm gonna lower Johnny a little bit so we can work on the throttle area. That appears to be the next steps. I'm wondering if I can lower him just a little bit, but still be able to keep the toolbox in there and work all in one space. That was so handy. Okay, let's see how that works. Okay, for now we're finished under the tractor here. We've got most of that mechanism put in place. Um, we have a lot more to do under there. I don't know how, maybe not a lot, but we have to put this uh, safety shield up or protection shield eventually, so that will have to be done. The cats are going nuts. It's kind of an every video thing now, isn't it? We're gonna move from the bottom part of the tractor here where the acceleration pedals are up to the fuel pump. And that's where the throttle control actually takes place today. Right now there's a line that runs from the hand throttle to the fuel pump. We're gonna modify how that works. I'm not sure how yet, but we'll follow the directions from there. It gets a little tedious to show you some of this step by step, and also the camera angles are very difficult to be helpful. Um, a lot of this is kind of behind, uh, hidden, and it's, it's just not easy to show. So I think I'm just gonna tell you what I've done here, describe the overall steps, I think that'll work. So at a high level, we'll now have two throttle cables going to the fuel pump, one from the hand throttle and one from the auto throttle uh, on the foot controls. 
So we're going to be replacing two brackets, and these are the two old brackets. I've already got them replaced. This is the old throttle bracket, and you used one of these holes and just hooked the old throttle cable in it. And this is the uh, kind of adjustment bracket down here. So we replaced this bracket with one with two slots. This one only had one slot. And we've think, replaced Mary? this one with a slightly more sophisticated uh, right cable holder. The camera. Along the same lines, we're going to replace the throttle cable itself. The first throttle cable just has these uh, crooks in both ends. But given that there's two of them now, they've changed the way this throttle cable works. So now there's an actual slot in here, a little grommet uh, of sorts. Um, and then you can get both of them slid in there side by side, and they don't bind up. When I started in on this, I was pretty nervous. I felt like I was getting into some pretty high-tech uh, stuff here, and I didn't want to mess up anything with the fuel pump. I, I was a little concerned about that. Turns out there was really nothing to be worried about. There's one spring here that uh, holds tension on the throttle so that it'll come back down uh, automatically if, if the cable pulls, you know, allows it to go down. That's easy to take off, uh, easy to get back on. It wasn't nearly as difficult as I thought. The part that I did find somewhat challenging was the throttle cable itself. It's a little difficult to reach it way up in here. It's hard to get to. Now the instructions talk about removing a dash cover, uh, and I believe this may be specific to the 2025R. I don't believe there is a, a corresponding dash cover that can be removed on the 1025R, so it might be just a little bit more difficult in that sense. My biggest challenge on the throttle cable was this little uh, connection right here. This is what holds the throttle cable from sliding back and forth. And I had to uh, hit the edge of that with a screwdriver, hold it down in order to be able to pull that old throttle cable out through there. The other challenge was actually hooking the end of the throttle cable back up to the throttle connector. Now, after we've done the hand throttle, we have to run the, the throttle cable from the pedals. If you recall, we ran those right up here between this bracket and just kind of stuck it out up here. This is another area where the 1025R might be a little more complex than the 2025R, or at least a little different. And the photos in the book are, are not perfect for helping us. So I routed it right over the brake shaft right there, right back down, and we changed this bracket a little bit. This bracket's mounted on here, uh, a little bit different angle than what it is on the 2025R. This cable comes right up through here, and it's too long, which makes sense that some of this stuff is not going to be the perfect length because the 2025R is a taller tractor. So I've looped this cable, and I'm going to get a zip tie and tie it somewhere so that I can keep it kind of away from the engine. I think I may tie it to the hand throttle cable here. That will keep that loop away from the engine, it won't get heated up there. It's really not in the way too much. I'll cut that off a little bit later. At this point, we have both of our throttle cables run. One to the manual throttle, one to the auto throttle. We're ready to do a test. We need to test both ends of the engine idle. We need to make sure that the cable is, extends far enough to allow the engine to idle uh, all the way down at the 1550 RPMs. And when the throttle is all the way up, we need to make sure that this pulls it all the way to the high idle mark. Now we could probably tell this visually because the high idle mark is adjusted there. The low idle mark is adjusted with that screw right there. So we probably could see this, but it's always nice to test it. Okay, so the first thing I check after I started is, are we idling around 1500 to 1550? we are so the low idle speed is correct now I'm going to try the hand throttle when I go full throttle it should go to 3400 rpm double check that I'm in neutral I'm going to try the forward pedal it should go all the way to 3400 rpm not quite Let's try the reverse pedal. Okay, so we saw that the hand throttle worked beautifully, low and high. We saw that the reverse pedal worked perfectly. 
but the forward pedal doesn't quite bring the RPM all the way to 3,400. It brought it to about 3,200. So we'll make a small adjustment. When we push the forward pedal all the way down, it doesn't quite push this far enough. So we will lengthen this linkage a round or two. Okay, so the last step is putting this cover on. It's a little bit hard to get it to fit right over this piece here. There's hardly enough room. But it just, with a little bit of, uh, I don't know, prying on it, I'm able to get it over that shaft. See what I mean there? Now there's a bolt hole up here and one in here. Both of them have nuts already on them. Now there's a third bolt supposed to be back here in the back. But on the 1025R, there is no hole for it. We'll talk about that in a minute. Not very many bolts left in your kit, so it should be easy to find the right ones for this. A little bit of a challenge here. This uh, hydraulic line is right in the way. So we either need to bend it permanently or maybe just hold it away from it for the moment to see if we can get that bolt started. I think it'll be fine in the long term. It's just not handy to start the bolt. Okay mainly bent it with my fingers. I believe I can insert that top bolt over the top of it now. Something you want to be very careful with. You never know what size extension is going to work best, huh? Now, as I mentioned, there's a third hole right up in here in the bracket, but there is no hole in the tractor. So if you want to do it right, you probably should bore the hole in the bracket on the tractor there so that you can hold up the back end of this cover. I suppose if I were to back into something just right, I could I could bend that down. I'm gonna risk it. I'm not gonna put that hole in the back there. I'm just gonna use the front two bolts. The cover seems pretty sturdy to me. Who knows, maybe I can tear it up, but it looks pretty good to me. It works. You notice I uh, keep the RPMs up a little more than I would normally. Probably I would have just went back and forth at idle. Uh, with this approach, uh, it's got a little more power because the RPMs naturally come up with the pedals. I think this is going to improve the utility of the 1025R. The install is not trivial, but it doesn't require any major tools. It just requires patience and um, you know, some basic ability with tools. You can handle it with no problems. You can get yours at greenpartsstore.com slash TTWT. It's listed right there in the featured products. Use the coupon code TTWT for free shipping. I hope you've enjoyed this, everybody. I'm excited about it. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.